Hi everyone, John with Charles here, and we are back for day two of the Brimfield Flea Market. We started our day off early today, got up very early in the morning so that we could beat the heat and the crowds and head over to the flea market. So we got up, left our hotel, and headed down to the little town of Brimfield where we were going to spend the day looking at the second part of the Brimfield flea market venue. Now, as you see, we started yesterday up here. So today we decided to focus on the second third. Yesterday we focused on the last third of this mile long stretch. And so now we were kind of in the center and we started off at the New England Motel, which is also conveniently located right next to the food court. So at New England Motel, uh, one of the things that we noticed were Christmas items. Because it's Christmas in July. This lady was actually the largest collector of Christmas ornaments. Uh, I actually picked these up, went to go ask her the price on them, and someone snagged them by the time I got back. Yeah, it's, uh, it's tough to hold on to things when there's not that many to choose from. Not too many vendors selling Christmas items. Those that did had very few to choose from, even though you would think with Christmas in July and whatnot, you'd see more of that, uh, but not the case here. And so this one vendor seemed to have most of the Christmas items and people were flocking toward those who were interested in Christmas items. We also found a lot of silver and crystal pieces uh, in this area. And also they had a lot of furniture. That was a big thing. Yes. And uh, getting out there early allowed us to see a lot of things uh, without a crowd there. So we were uh, able to take our time and look through. Huge area here with Persian rugs for sale. Uh, beautiful area with rugs. And this was all in one uh, enclosed area inside of uh, the New England Motel area. Jewelry, a constant theme in here. Uh, throughout this entire event, jewelry everywhere. Yeah, that's one thing I've been surprised about is pretty much everybody has a wide collection of jewelry. Right, and as you'll see here, just like we saw yesterday, tents everywhere with vendors set up uh, and just about anything you can think of. And also we saw a collection of ironstone. Yes, typical things that you'll see at antique uh, shows. Uh, of course you see those things. And then you see things like just glassware of different types. Lots of maps, I saw a lot of maps and, uh, and, and old, old images uh, from magazines. People collect these apparently. So had a few booths where I saw this, very well curated. And John found this beautiful china set. I didn't happen to look at it because he was already recording it. Yes, this is uh, absolutely beautiful. I just, I love the way they had it set out too. The table and uh, the entire set was for sale. Uh, again, lots of tents. You know, you can't make it into every single one of them. You try to, you pass by, you take a look in, and uh, and you keep going. Because this particular uh, venue boasted over 400 vendors. And this 1966 Fender Mustang for $3,499. That's in beautiful condition. I did not expect to find that here. Yeah, absolutely. And then you've got these old cash registers. Um, for somebody who likes to, to collect those things, I suppose. We headed over next to Black Swan Meadows, which is another venue. These are all right next to each other. Uh, so we walked on over, and one of the things you saw was this. The Letters for Santa mailbox. I was shocked. Yeah, it was, it was great. Another thing we saw a lot of, silverware. Like you said before, silver itself, uh, silver objects and whatnot, but we saw silverware a lot. But again, more silver. Yeah, this guy had a very nice collection of silverware. Yeah. We headed over next to Steven's place, uh, which was not just this one building, it was another uh, field area, but this was there uh, kind of as you came up, what you saw. Uh, cast iron uh, in this particular booth, this vendor had a lot of uh, vintage uh, cast ironware, and I thought that was pretty neat. He also had some uh, war relics and things like that. And uh, then we headed over to Midway, uh, which was another field out there. We were just rocking and rolling going through these this morning. Um, and here is a collection of toys. A lot of that. Saw a lot of vendors selling toys and, and collectible items like that. Yeah, they had a, this guy had a very nice collection of vintage toys. And of course, you can't go anywhere without seeing that pattern um, for the dishes. Um, 
And then just here's another uh, set of figurines and uh, a little tea set that I thought was uh, pretty. And we see that they're just kind of stuck in among everything else, frogs and whatnot. Beer taps. Those, the handle, those handles, I, I just was overwhelmed with the collection this guy had. If you collect them, he had them. And in the Coca-Cola set, like I... It took me about 10, 15 minutes to look at everything. Yeah, he this had guy everything. had a huge collection of Coca-Cola, vintage, more modern stuff. If you're looking for Coca-Cola items, this is all one vendor. He had it all uh, there over at, uh, at Midway. And then we ran down the street to Central Park, which is another field. First thing that I saw, and I see this in a lot, is the African statues, bead necklaces, they're everywhere. I love this pig here. It was made from a propane canister and he had wings. But this was a vendor who was selling uh, uh, items made from, from trash, basically, uh, recycling items. Yeah, this tent here was actually really impressive. This lady had a very nice curated collection. Flow blue, crystal, silver, you name it. Yeah, she had it, it was a lot of things in there. And then one of the last booths we visited for the day, you've got to see this, and I hope I got this in the shot. Silverware, but curated. Look how well that's curated. Yeah, they have the name, they have years of when the pieces were made from that company. I spoke to the lady, her sister sat down and curated every one of these, and there were tons of boxes. Absolutely beautiful. And then uh, that was it for the day. Uh, before it got too hot, we scooted on out of Brimfield and headed out of town. Then we stopped at the coffee mug and this place was absolutely awesome. It was a diner setting, but food that was way better than a diner and yeah. the service was amazing. Yeah, great place to go. If you're in the area and you'd like some place besides the on-site vendors uh, to, to have something to eat, we'll have everything in the description below so you can stop by and see these folks. Now let's talk about what we took home. Okay, so what we brought home was a lot of vinyls <laughs> and a blanket, which I'll talk about last. So first thing we got was grease. Everybody loves grease. And the condition of this one is very good. There's very minor, tiny scratches. The actual case, there's minimal damage. So we paid $5 for it. I looked it up, it's about 25 bucks. Wow, that's a great deal. And then next, we have Saturday Night Fever. Um, that one, same place that we got grease from. Uh, we paid $5 for it too. And there's very small little scratch on the very front of it. So that one was $5. We looked that one up, 30 bucks. $30. Yeah, and the condition of the vinyl is just the same as grease, very good condition. The next was a surprise for me, which is Journey's Greatest Hits. It is still sealed. This one I looked up and because of the stickers on it of how it was pressed and recorded, that one, Steel sealed was $150 and we only paid 20 bucks for it. Nice. The next was another sealed one that I found in the same box as Journey. It's Queen's Greatest Hits. Still sealed. And I looked that one up. That one was 150 bucks too, still sealed and we paid 20 bucks for that one as well. Then next was one I've been looking for, which is by the Eagles and it's Hotel California. Can't see a lot of the vinyl, but it's in decent condition, but it only costs five bucks. Now the vinyl itself is in perfect condition. It has very minor, minor scratches. And the guy even told me the ones that are open the vinyls are pretty much perfect condition. Then I went uh, to another location and found Michael Jackson Thriller. 
I remember this album. I had this album as a kid. <laughs> so this one, the vinyl is in perfect condition. The guy who had this one, he used to collect them and he's just thinning some of his collection out. So this one ended up costing $10. And looked this one up and it was 35 online for the condition of the package and the condition of the vinyl itself. And last but not least, I finally found myself a Bing Crosby Merry Christmas vinyl. So even though it has a little browning around the edges, it really doesn't matter because this one is something a lot of people look for. So I looked to this one up. Of course, I checked the vinyl out first. The vinyl is perfect. But I looked this one up. It was $50 and we paid $5 for that one too. Wow, what a deal on that. So tell us about this blanket. So this was the last booth we went to this morning. The lady was super nice, and the guy who ran the place was very knowledgeable about pretty much everything. It was the video with the curated silverware. So this is the lady we got it from. This piece is from 1900 to 1910. It's an 85 by 85. She's had it since her grandmother made it. Um, well, great, no, great grandmother, she said. Sorry. Um, it is silk on the inside, and I'll open it up here and show you. And it is actually made, it's done on the inside here with a pattern. So it's silk. And uh, it has what they call a turkey stitch is the yellow that you see all over the blanket. And it, she said it took her grandmother a very long time to make this piece. Because after she sewed all those patches together, she went through and hand stitched all of it. So I looked this piece up and in the condition and the quality that it was made, only found five of them online, but not with the exact same pattern. Well, this is a one of a kind, right? Yeah, it's a one of a kind. But any of them similar to it, similar age, uh, quality and stuff, I found five of them for about 1400 bucks a piece. Wow, and you paid? 90 bucks because she wanted 100, but she came down $10 on it. Wow, what a deal. So overall, even though we didn't have quite a, as big of a haul as we did yesterday, we still came home with uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of seven albums, vinyls, mm -hmm. and, a, uh, and a blanket. So what did we spend and what is it worth? So we spent 75 on the vinyls and we spent 90 on the quilt. So we spent 165 on everything you see here. Mm-hmm. And replacement value for all of these pieces is $1,865. Wow. So quite a haul, even though it's not as much uh, as yesterday, and it certainly isn't crystal, but still, that's quite a haul. Yeah, I like the blanket just because it had a Christmas theme to it, and I, well, I love Christmas. Right, it's very pretty. It's very beautiful. So, If you like our haul from today, make sure you go and hit that like button for us. If you like our videos, go over and hit subscribe and make sure you turn on notifications so you get all of our videos. Plus, we'll be in Brimfield one more day tomorrow, so make sure you catch our video tomorrow. Also, our new store is coming soon at store.charlesandjohn.com where you'll be able to get some of the items we've collected and have in our, in our own collection that we've curated for you to buy. And first come, first serve. And that'll be out soon, so keep an eye out for that. Until tomorrow, thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye, guys.